Yeah, welcome for, to, to our June 4th session in room 4. Um, as we will be been discussing how we move forward with, with June 4. So we have the architecture working group, we have a couple of working groups and a couple of people working on the next version of Joomla. So uh, the idea for this session was to, um, uh, to present ideas and then discuss and uh, look what we get at the end. So we will be starting first and then uh, George will do some slides so they have both ideas we have as PLT and then we can maybe have a good idea of what we have to do and what you like to see. Hi, my name is Niels Bracek and uh, I'm working on, together with some people, on uh, what we call Joomla Pythagoras. Pythagoras. Uh, it's got his name because uh, a certain aspect of its architecture. I'll come to that later. The first question is why do we need a new, a new Joomla? Uh, the current code base, the current version, is based on a 10-year-old uh, outdated technology. And, um, and when it was created, it was new, it was shiny, and it was state-of-the-art. But uh, in our world, 10 years are two generations, so it's very old and outdated. We have uh, new backend technologies like uh, Laravel. We have front-end technologies like Angular 2 and uh, React, and uh, Joomla can't respond to that currently. And uh, what we can see is that these projects take developers from our community. So the market runs away from Joomla. Because not using state-of-the-art technology is uh, like a death sentence to the project. And that's why uh, we urgently need uh, modern technology. That's the why. So I want to say a few words about uh, the architecture. The most important part, I think, is the orthogonality. It's hard to pronounce to me. Um, it says, uh, that we use orthogonal components. Uh, this principle describes vertical components like uh, what you know as uh, content, web links, spanners, users, and so on. And uh, they are combined with horizontal components like uh, a workflow, with publishing stuff, uh, tagging, and version. And horizontal components add functionality to vertical components on the fly without explicit coding. That's the idea behind that. So uh, if you write a new component, you don't have to care about tagging or versioning, you get it out of the box. For storage, uh, the components will use uh, entities to communicate with uh, storage layer, so repositories. They will not use SQL directly uh, because uh, we want to support a wide range of, of databases. <coughs> Zero repositories support uh, separation of read and write access. Uh, so we, at a later stage, can uh, introduce event sourcing and uh, such cool stuff. Uh, it's too early now, but uh, it will come in <coughs> X plus two, maybe. Um, we will use Doctrine as an abstraction layer, not the OIM, just the abstraction layer. Uh, so we get uh, support of MySQL, SQLite, Postgres, Oracle, and MySQL server out of the box without having, uh, having to take care of it ourselves. <coughs> We've heard that before, so uh, it's better to let others do that. And uh, the repositories also allow us to use different data sources like uh, uh, CSV files, I already use that. Uh, or XML files, or web services, or whatever you can think. Yeah? All relations are resolved automatically uh, by the access layer, by the repository. 
so you don't have to worry about that. If uh, you have uh, added a profile component to a user component and you request the user, you get the profile directly. You don't have to ask for the profile separately. On the rendering side, um, the components encapsulate these uh, entities with content types uh, in order to add semantics to them. Because uh, it's depending on context how data should be interpreted uh, or shown or made uh, uh, visual. Let's say an address is different uh, if it's uh, a user's address or it's a venue address, maybe. Um, components do not provide any layout information <coughs> because they manage data, <coughs> not layouts. Uh, they cannot because uh, they don't know about the context of the request. Could be um, what we now know as a module. Uh, renderers will turn uh, these content types into HTML, JSON, plain text, or arbitrary other formats, uh, depending on the request. Um, <coughs> um, special handling, of course, for HTML because uh, it has to be uh, controlled by a template and the output has to be embedded in the output. And of course, uh, I know that question will come, components can add their own content types in order to control rendering. One of the most cool stuff we have is a page builder. Um, it's a drag and drop uh, thing oriented on uh, how presentation programs work. Mm -hmm. So you can uh, you have a template, you have master layouts, and you can drag them in into your page. And uh, each block uh, in this layout can be filled with static content or dynamic content. So any component's output can be viewed in any position. So what we know as modules now gets obsolete because it's views on components data. Yeah? Uh, blocks can be related to each other, so uh, you can have an article here and show its tags uh, in another position. There's a relation. If you change the article, the text will change too. So that's a lot of things to do. And um, that's why <coughs> we have struggled with the original uh, approach to make an uh, incremental development. We originally tried to take uh, Joomla 3.4 at that time and uh, transform it into this vision. And uh, there were too many obstacles like, li uh, like tight coupling, uh, missing tag, uh, or insufficient tests, and it made incremental development a nightmare. A clean base allowed us to, to make fast progress. We have all the, base in the basics already in place now, already today. Um, everything that was decided in Odense and in Athens on the architecture sprints uh, will still be there as we defined it. And uh, what's most important for, for all of you is uh, that this Joomla X will not get released until we have a one-click upgrade ready. Yeah. So uh, that's, that's one of the reasons why we switched from calling it Joomla 4 to, uh, for to Joomla X, because uh, there are reasons to increment the major number before we come to this. So that's why we call it Joomla X now. So any questions to that? So you might want to elaborate that the one click upgrade is for the core and the extensions uh, should have a minimum effort. I think it will be hard pressed to ensure that there's no work to be done, but yeah, that's we right. envision an amulet. That's, that's right. We, we can uh, guarantee the one click upgrade only for things we have under control. 
That's uh, official Joomla extensions. Mm -hmm. that, that's what we can say. Um, what I'm dreaming of is uh, that all of you, is that you will see this as, as, a, as a lighthouse uh, where we will be and we want to be in, in a couple of years, a few years, I hope, maybe one, two, ideally, if you got no hands on it. But uh, that we all together build a bridge between what we have now and where we will get. So we can meet in the middle. The gap smaller and smaller, uh, so it's uh, feasible. Um, the pain for third-party developers as little as possible. I have one question. Uh, will this uh, update be on Joomla framework? Uh, since I didn't see any changes recently to the old Joomla framework without any content of this. I'm not sure if you follow me. Yeah, um, you don't see changes in the Joomla framework currently because uh, we use an incubator. Um, until recently we were experimenting with this approach and uh, we're unsure if, if we really want to go this way. Uh, that's why we didn't pollute the, the framework. Uh, but um, in our source we have an uh, incubator directory where all the uh, libraries from the framework that we use are incorporated, where we can change without destroying anything okay, yet. So and we can port back if uh, we decide, okay, that's okay, it. Okay, so uh, all changes which will be in Joomla X will be all in Joomla framework. Yeah? That's the idea, yes. Yeah. Okay, so Joomla framework isn't going away. It will still be there. Yes. Yes, yes. yes. There's no reason to abandon yeah. that. Me and Mike are still working on that. Should we, should we do the second part and then start going through the discussion? Okay. No, it's better, I think it's better when we get okay. all, all the information. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, it's at HDMI, I guess. Or oh, whatever it is. Kind of it, it, it's, it's, it's Mac. I need to use Perfect. speed port also. <coughs> okay. Because it's active. I'm standing in the room now instead of Neil, so I hold a slightly different view to how um, I believe Joomla 4 should look. And it's not necessarily contradictory to what Neil says. Um, my opinion is that um, it's similar but different. So, first of all, I'd just like to say from the outset that Joomla 4 is not here to solve all our problems. Like, we have a bunch of other non-coding problems that Joomla, as a project, needs to solve. And despite we are all developers, and I'm not, you know, this is almost more marketing and other stuff. Like, we should not be under the illusion that by releasing Joomla 4, whether it's with clean base or it's some kind of incremental approach, Joomla 4 will not solve all our problems. And I think that's very important to remember from the offset. Um, the other thing I'd like to kind of also say is, what are Joomla's strengths? What is our competition? And this is my opinion. Uh, Joomla has a framework, but its primary focus is not a framework. Joomla's primary focus is a CMS. But neither are we a pure blogging system. We are a system that allows people to build kind of medium to high complexity websites, but we make it easy for people by giving them extensions and templates and stuff. That is, we are not there to compete with high-end Drupal sites with completely custom, massive amounts of data. We are not to competing with low-end Drupal sites which are just a blog and a couple of static pages. We're somewhere in the middle. We are certainly not out there to compete with Symphony and Laravel. 
they are market leaders and you know, the Joomla framework is never going to compete with them. And I think that's also an important thing to remember. We're not here to compete with Laravel. So what are the benefits of an incremental approach to our development, rather than this kind of clean slate approach that Niels has been proposing? So to me, I think I can sum it up with these three things. It's much more easy for third-party extension developers to adapt and slowly increment their code then even if you have a clean slate at some point, even if you manage to make it completely backwards compatible, at some point people need to rewrite their extensions onto the new system. Even if it's not when that new system comes out because you've basically kept the old code base there in parallel, at some point people need to move from track Joomla 3 to track Joomla 4. Even if that's in Joomla 5 when you remove all the Joomla 3 compatibility layer, you need to make this pretty much complete rewrite if you're going down a clean base approach. Secondly, our system is incredibly easy for people who are relatively new to coding to come in and design something simple. There's a lot of things that we could do with Joomla, but we choose not to because we want to make things easy for people. If you are, um, you know, when I first came to Joomla, one of the, I didn't know any PHP, didn't know you could have mentioned PHP to me and I wouldn't complete blank. And I started learning PHP by making simple modules and evolving. And I think that if you um, end up at this point where you've got this um, completely theoretically amazing product with command buses and HMVCs and rendering layers separated out, um, yeah, for a high-end developer, that's fantastic. Um, but it's not the kind of developer that's more, more likely to be using Joomla. Those people are already in the Drupal market, already. That's not the kind of developer that Joomla is targeting. And it's not the kind of, more importantly, it's not the kind of developer that people, uh, that existing, the majority of existing Joomla developers are. The majority of people who are at this conference have already distinguished themselves by turning up here and being around. They are probably, at the, you guys are all probably at the higher end of our developer level. Uh, I'll take questions at the end. But there's yeah, discussions the for this. The question when we... <laughs> Sorry. Um, I'll, we, there's going to be a discussion at the end of this, so we'll take the questions then. Um, and the most important thing is, is that there still can be a higher goal, like what Niels is describing, but it gives us incremental progress towards that. It is not a clean base. It gives people time to update this part of their code or that part of their code, which is particularly poor. And so Niels' thing could be, you know, in two years, we might have a, you know, it might be Joomla 5, Joomla 6, something like that. Okay, Joomla 6 in two years is maybe a bit exaggerating, but you know, Joomla 5 or something like that. And Joomla 4 can be a halfway house that allows people to slowly transition their code towards a higher level goal even if you wanted to go down that kind of route, which I'm not convinced on, but... Um, and so what are these kind of low-hanging fruits that we can make progress on? Um, and I think, to me, there's a handful of things that I put here. First of all, um, we can remove, uh, deprecate JFactory and implement a dependency injection container that allows people to override some of the core parts of Joomla much easier without much less hacking, and we can do it completely BC. We can absolutely do this completely BC. I, me and Michael have been playing around with things, and we've managed to do this completely BC. Um, in terms of, when I say BC, okay, I should clarify. It's not BC enough that we can put it in three, but it's BC from an extension developer to go and use the new container system. And, J, and if they're using JFactory, it will not break. Um, we can read out the plugin system. Actually, the plugin system in Joomla is really, really bad on performance. A lot of the performance is lost in our plugin system. And we can move to a new uh, plugin system based on the framework. Um, uh, Nicholas had done a lot of work on this in the Pythagoras repo already. Uh, existing plugins won't break. 
um, if, but they would have to use a legacy layer, hence why this would be a June the 4th thing. But as long as they implement, uh, extend a J plugin legacy or something like that, they could use the old system with no problem. And actually moving to the new system would only involve very minor changes to your scheme. It's basically the way that um, data is transferred from your component into the plugin would be the only change. So basically the parameters of your pl uh, plugin events would be the only change you'd need to make. The actual contents of your plugins would be pretty much unchanged. But there'd be massive performance gains to be had. Um, other low hanging fruits, UX improvements. Um, we all know that we're stuck on Bootstrap 2. We can look at moving to some other kind of CSS framework or maybe um, forking BS2. If we really felt that it was too much of a break to move to BS4 or BS3, um, we can uh, do some more work on our media manager. Our media manager is probably one of the most lacking parts in Joomla. Um, there's a lot of things that we can't do in Joomla 3. Uh, th there's some stuff that we're severely limited in Joomla 3 because um, you know you want to be able to use things like AWS, and uh, to do that would involve using some kind of um, alternative file system API, which would not be BC in Joomla 3. Um, it wouldn't be this massive BC breaks, but it is a BC break, and therefore would require a Joomla 4. Um, and we can also remove some of our deprecated classes. We've got so much that's deprecated, and it actually means that when you're coming in and new to Joomla, it is much harder to learn the code base. Um, I wouldn't advocate getting rid of everything in one clean sweep because it's pretty much got to the point where so much would break. But there are so many like empty classes that wrap other classes where we've moved things to auto-loading. We've got classes, jRequest, for example, that's been deprecated for nearly five years now. I think it's about time that that thing bit the dust. Um, <laughs> you know, um, there's a lot of things that we can get rid of, but you know, maybe even though J object, as an example, is deprecated, that thing's just used so much everywhere. Maybe that makes waits another version before we fully remove it. But we look to try and remove as much use of it as possible. So what kind of time scale are we talking about for those things that I just talked about? So with the right amount of coffee and a team of five or six people, um, we can do this in six months. And that's not uh, under exaggeration. Me, Nick, and Michael between us had cleaned out a lot of code, moved to the new event system, and namespaced everything in the PyTag branch before they moved to this kind of clean slate approach. So, you know, a lot of it's done. Um, and so I, I honestly think that we can do this in six months. That, was, that took us about two months, by the way, to give you an idea of time scales for how long the stuff we did in the previous PyTag branch. We'd have to rewrite it because there's been so much changes in the CMS repo since that haven't been merged into PyTag. And it's one of those things where you've got to keep merging it regularly, otherwise it's going to be a nightmare. But, you know, I. This, that could be done in six months, all those things. So with that, I'm kind of going to open up questions and maybe a bit of discussion, kind of leave it open to you guys. So yeah. Yeah, can you go back to two slides? Because I don't want to make sure that I've got the correct interpretation of the number of Which benefits. Which one? Benefits. Yeah. Uh, I think, yeah, was it? Um, you were talking. Yeah, back to that. Uh, then. Why are you thinking? I'll get you running in the back. Sorry. Yeah. Why are you thinking? I'll get you running in the back. <laughs> yes, Renny. So, um, I, I, I fundamentally, I don't think I believe in a middle market. I think that WordPress, interestingly enough, this is a very interesting point. WordPress won the mass market not by code, but but by a very simple. So yeah. perhaps the biggest challenge we have right now is giving people the intuitive impression that the administration is easier. Yeah. And perhaps we were so focused on it being the first CMS on a smartphone that we forgot the use of the process. So I think that is the ultimate, most important thing we can learn when it comes to how we move forward. That said, the, the talk about who are we, how do we define ourselves in the future, I don't see Google being able to do anything we can do. 
superior product. I see different kind of companies that traditionally work with Drupal that are larger companies, but I don't think Drupal can do anything better than Joomla can do as such. So, work with one I of the I think that Drupal, Drupal's, of course Drupal's UX is much more complex. I think there are more things you can do with Drupal that are reasonably technical. Uh, but the most important thing I think that Drupal has in its favor at the moment is that it is going to be relatively easier to use it because they're using Symfony. Yeah. yeah. So, so they're, they're moving into that, and that will give them some uh, benefits from <coughs> Symfony, but maybe not from Drupal. I mean, they're, they're overriding so much of Symfony, it's, yeah. it's but, borderline by the fact that it's actually materialized. But, but let's start. try and get back to, to the basis of, of uh, the definition of who we're going to do something for. I mean, for the last 10 years, we've been sitting between two, stack, two, two chairs. <coughs> right. So we've been looking uh, <coughs> to everyone, but not enough for anyone. I so, think so, yeah. so maybe we should, we should be pretty tight. If WordPress is one of the last in the bottom 50%, then uh, let's, I mean, is it interesting to do a 12-hour scrap? Uh, I don't think it is. I don't think it's, uh, I don't want to spend my working life with that. So WordPress can have that. And then I'd rather do something else from more real projects from the middle and up. But I don't think we can, limiting ourselves only to the middle is a very hard position. Yeah. I mean, you can see uh, Microsoft just killed their C5 ERP system because they have deemed that the mass market is not interesting. Yeah. So it's 2018, it's out. So the vision got 40% yeah, and the goal is, is the middle and up mass. Yeah. So I think I think the middle and up is, is the right show, but I don't think we should have a, a up or block and say we're on the middle. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, and that's where I disagree with, with George, because uh, we're not losing our developers. To, to WordPress and, and to Drupal in the masses, we are losing them to Laravel. Yeah. But I don't care about our developers. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but our developers as, as a developer, yeah. you know, I, I, the developers aren't Joomla's target. The, the target of Joomla's audience is the people who make websites with the extensions. Having extensions is, of course, a requirement, and so you need to have some developers for that. But the target market for Joomla is the people using the extensions, not the people making the extensions. And I think that's an important difference to make. Um, no, 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 so I tried to organize it in speaking now. So it was you, 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 and you, and you also. So we start with the right one. That's it. If you only have to agree, then you don't need to say the right one. You don't have to be simpler, you have to welcome people and look at them. Mm -hmm. This is what the WordPress is that simpler. It looks simpler. It tells you welcome. Right. And then one month after, you know it's complex, but you're still working with it and it's done. Mm -hmm. and I agree with you that welcome the people. Okay. It looks simple. Yeah. yeah, so I think the problem comes to uh, the market for the today. So on one side they are saying, so George you said that extension developers are not the market for Joomla, but actually they are enablers for Joomla. Our roadmap for a long time has been making the core line and making extension developers more powerful. If that's the case, then extension developers should be enabled with a better and stronger base so that Joomla can be marketed. Because you have lots of cases now that because Joomla has an e-commerce extension, that's why I am choosing Joomla. Yeah. So you have a lot of cases like that under 8000 extensions. And it's a very extension first approach, whether we say it out or not. We have actually had it at the core of the way Joomla has grown from the start. So we should kind of embrace that, either embrace that, or I mean, kind of be clear as to, like Ronnie said, probably WordPress is uh, a very consumer market, but as Joomla, we are not very consumer friendly. We are still a little bit more integrator friendly, where we depend on integrators to make it consumer friendly. Yeah. So if that's the case, we need to ensure that we are friendly for extension developers, we are friendly for consulting agencies, we are friendly for integrators. Yeah. And it's up to them to make it easy for end users. Yes. I already see it that <coughs> the CMS is kind of enabling the distribution of, and CMS as CMS, probably Joomla 3 got more CMS than ever compared to you know, CMS features. But if you look at it, that's actually completely evolved. The entire internet has evolved in the last few years. So it's one from being a geek place to being a consumer place.
And that's the reason WordPress got so much of its market. But because the geek market didn't grow at the same pace as the consumer market. But to comment on that, you mentioned like extension developers, uh, implementers, and oh. then the end users. Yeah. And I think it's, it's, it's also really important, important still to embrace, yeah. make it easier, acceptable for core developers. Absolutely. That's so that actually, that's that's the much more the technical yeah. part. And yeah. if you make the core less technical, less interesting, yeah. then actually for those core developers, it's better to run off to exactly. uh, Laravel. But, okay. still, but uh, is that really where the developers are going? Or are the developers going to WordPress? I don't think we should consume that child problem with the market. It's a discussion, sir. We are doing that and doing that a lot. That maintaining developers with whom is really a child problem. It's not a market problem. No. Okay, so they should not be mixed up, ideally. And if you do want to mix them up, the way we do it is that the Joomla platform can get really, really technical, not a problem. CMS as a distribution of the platform can be where probably George is trying to stay where it becomes really user-friendly and that becomes that can take on WordPress or Drupal or whatever. But I think distributions is the way to go. Okay. And we can kind of, you know, separate out yeah. the needs of the developers and the market. Yeah, I think we keep and talking. Give more space. Um, <coughs> I have a question to George. Uh, yes. Uh, can we achieve your vision uh, with Juna 3? Because you told, told us that, that it's not PC or something. Why we not uh, improve Juna 3 on this way? and uh, news, new shiny uh, Yeah, so I know. Uh, so my thing is, is that, and I kind of uh, one of these slides. We cannot do some changes without breaking the scene, and you have to move for the matter version into the two new Yeah, that's a that cool. Yeah, it might be it might be in name June the four, but it's not going to be a big one point five to two point five thing. It is a lot of small changes that are BC breaking, but give us large amount of benefits. And small breaks, the bigger BC breaks are with Juma five. Yeah, if you want, and that's that's possible. Um, it depends. Yeah, we can just keep making loads of small improvements for the rest of our life if we wanted to go that way. But it's not incompatible with Niels's thing, but I think exactly. that we should be looking to make... Exactly. Because, uh, and as I think that, that we, in the end, agree upon that uh, both, both approaches have the basis. Yes. And um, that it would be best for Joomla as a whole to, to meet in the middle. So just to, to push to meet somewhere. No, not yet, not yet. <laughs> uh, you're, you're, you're on the list. So we have some extra. Two things. First, I think there are two different problems uh, here. Move number one, I would different uh, I would make a difference between looking friendlier and having a different code base. Because we can definitely make a product that's more user friendly without changing any kind of code in the world. And that's just a uh, uh, user uh, design and experience, and you can build that on whatever product you like. Uh, proof is WordPress, WordPress is a shitty code base, everyone knows that. Uh, I hope everyone agrees, it. but uh, it has a great user interface. So, but, but, but uh, before we continue, uh, I think what, what no, is no, no, not the not only code. You only uh, speak to you. That, that's <laughs> right. So I would <laughs> to, to make to make a final Joomla, we need a new code base. That's not true, and it's a totally different problem from what we are discussing here, which is more a developer uh, uh, The second thing here is that I'm talking from experience. I have my badges here as a developer. Uh, and I see that when I choose the tool to use to uh, ship something for a client, depends on, on the project the client has. Uh, Joomla, for me, is something that should cover what, what you call the middle market for me, which is not middle market as a user, but as a mix of budget and type of project. So if the user has not the budget for the user client, as in the budget for a huge custom built Laravel application, so it has to uh, leverage on something already existing, like a station in Joomla. Uh, it can do so by using Joomla. So take 80% of the projects that do that with the existing extension and do the custom uh, only for the 20% that, that's the main uh, on the project. Because if you have the budget and you are looking to build a custom application, why not go with a dedicated framework like Laravel, which is ages ahead of whatever we can build right now, and we cannot, as George said, compete with that because it's already established. There's a lot of 
uh, or any task in code that works already, and it would not make sense for them to end up there pure framework. And that we will should, we, should, uh, we should just second <laughs> We should build something that's definitely more advanced for developers, because I agree that the Joomla code base is getting old and it's becoming the new workers on that side. But it should allow for extensions developer, which are the main, uh, the, main the, the part of the user base that's getting more uh, damaged by a full switch to a new code base, uh, to approach this new version in a very easy way. To keep in mind that the, the final product should be something that's not a new article because that's not we, we will use too much. But still something advanced enough for developers to build cool things okay. and simple enough for extension developers to learn and to build uh, their extension or upgrade. That's my point. Okay, can I just say one thing very quickly? <laughs> yeah. And uh, I agree with all the stuff you said about Laravel, but the other thing is that even if you said then, oh, I want to build a CMS with Laravel, we're already behind the curve because yeah. there are already extended CMSs out there. It's like um, October's, the one that I've had of a lot, is <laughs> built on Laravel and is already relatively popular. If Joomla said tomorrow we're going to drop everything clean based on Laravel, let alone something we've built on Laravel. That's what Drupal did. Yeah, like, but Drupal, uh, you know, Drupal and that, you know, the up and coming like October are already there ahead of us. Yeah. So, uh, uh, okay. we heard about uh, rendering, uh, like the choice of the prototypes. Yeah. And uh, I don't know if you, you have already decided something about Bootstrap and the for Joomla future. Um, I, I tried to have an example uh, show for today, but uh, I, I didn't make it. I, I need a couple of days more for that. Um, but uh, in the end, it will be possible for each page yeah. defined by the template you use for that page, which framework you want to use. Mm -hmm. So, so you, on, the, so on the same side, you would be able to, to use Bootstrap 2, Bootstrap 4, and Foundation. It would be stupid to do so, but it mm -hmm. would be possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that's yeah. normally for you. <laughs> 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 so, um, Marco, Lisa, uh, Ronnie, uh, Anton, um, and Robert, the rest of the room. Yeah. 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 No, you. I want to use this whiteboard. Okay, next question. No, no, no. He has a problem with this VPN. Thank you, Tom. So, I was struggling uh, to understand uh, whether these two concepts are now competing or uh, in. Uh, complementary. So I first thought, well, they're competing, so we are here, and we either go this way, uh, just say the incremental route via <coughs> Joomla uh, 3.x and up, or we go the uh, the lighthouse uh, thingy uh, with Joomla, well, I'll call it X, because I think this Joomla 4 thing is really confusing stuff. So I, personally, my interpretation is what I've heard is this is not what we are trying to decide. It's either this or that. So what I understood is that, so we're now here. That's Joomla 3-ish. George has some valid very valid points on stuff that we can do now in this code base. Unfortunately, we can't do that in Joomla 3 because if only for the basics <coughs> of being tied down by MySQL and PHP versions. That's like a wall and chain. So possibly at some point in time, we should say, well, sod it. We'll have a Joomla 4 because that's what semantic vers versioning implies. Uh, we break something, at least we have uh, <coughs> access to uh, MySQL and PHP higher versions so that we could do stuff like uh, file system and storing our files on uh, Amazon Web Services. Yeah. Now then there's some more interesting stuff that George is talking about that might also require uh, backwards compatibility breaks uh, because removing stuff, etc. Still, well, that could be a Joomla 5. 
whatever, something. There could be even more in that chain, but as I understand it, and that's at least my vision, the ultimate finding the world lighthouse. Wow. Yeah, but we will do something where we. So this chain, to me, has an end. Uh, somewhere in time. Don't know where, don't know when. This and our <laughs> X is where we want to continue for the future, in my vision, which has a, is attractive te technically and still has uh, the same backwards compatibility promises uh, that That's George uh, wishes in terms of, uh, George talked well, it's easier to adopt for extension developers. Well, our, uh, as a June of 14, the, our commitment is to make it easy for extension developers to run their code as it is. And so at some point in time, we would have uh, Joomla X. Now, Joomla X would mean that extension developers could use all of these cool features like main driven development, uh, tactician, what have you not. But they are not required to do so, not um, like sheet of papers too small. At least not in the immediate You could future. start more lower. Yeah, you yeah. should. At some point in your mind, it has to be a No, no, so in this vision, you would, no, I don't think that it's effectively too seem. No, I don't think it's too seem. This would, at some point in time, become end of line, and then it should be taken over with. It could be, well, if you take the analogy of a car, Car could look the same from the outside, but it would have a different engine. So all of the experience could be the same, could be the same, but you could also opt for different options like that page builder or that CQRS-ish uh, approach. Okay. Our goal must be that we make this gap possible. Yes. Yeah. yeah, and, and that, that's yeah, yeah. But my point, okay, so what I say is, is that I would. I think my yeah, thing yeah. could compete with Neil's, or it could not. It depends on what we decide. Mm -hmm. I'd say that Joomla 4 is almost, with some sort of incremental things like I discussed, is almost essential. But I'd say you could end up at the same place just by having <coughs> lots of small things, mm -hmm. or at some point you can take a clean slate approach. And you'll end up at maybe roughly the same position, you know, tweaks here and there because mm -hmm. incremental versus Stuff but it also depends on that uh, you always end you're ending up the same goal. Like I'm actually not convinced that something like tactician is something the project needs. I think it's yeah, very good. nice from a developer perspective, but is it something that's really needed for a CMS? I'm actually not convinced. Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, it makes a lot of things easier. And you don't know. Uh, but I don't think the CMS cares about CLI scripts and stuff. There's no reason. It's just lazy standards. Yes, of course it does. It runs on the server and it has to be scriptable. No, I don't disagree. I don't think it does have to be Okay, so. Okay, well, um, that's a yes no discussion for the bar, I guess. But okay, well, I'll sit down and say, okay, to me, this tree ends somewhere, and then we should hop over to a new, real new racing car like in Formula One with a new engine. It could look the same from the outside. That's at least a good vision that I see. So, if you can answer your question, it doesn't have to compete, but it can compete. It can just be incremental forever, or at yeah. some point you can increment and then break off. So it can compete, but it doesn't have to compete. Yeah, yeah. The news can be freed from worrying about lack of compatibility uh, in, in many ways. It can be freed, his group can be freed to, to take it. Because the whole thing is, is so you can make a small statement, but not talk. Yeah, yeah just a, a small comment, because I'm, <laughs> I'm not sure like, how many of you are thinking that this is about UX. Nothing about UX. There can be problems of UX in there. UX is a little, there's a different line. Yeah. yeah. And, and this is basically the UX line. Yeah. 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 Just make this. Yeah. Well, I think it depends on what you're doing with it. Like, you can't move to Bootstrap 4 and say we're not doing a major version update. And if yeah. you say UX, you Because the JavaScript thing. Yeah, it should be. Well, uh, developers are users too. And they have the experience with it, so uh, how to how to oh, yeah, yeah, okay. extensions. So just one question, is, yeah. there, is there any reason we can't follow both these paths finally and overtaking at some point? Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's what I mean. Is it, yeah, there's no reason we can't look at it at all. I mean, yeah. means can 
start working with the top and come towards you. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, so but he's not so well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, with my approach, there's no guarantee that we ever would go to the campuses <laughs> being the same approach. Okay. You could, but you wouldn't. Because he locked into it. Uh, well, I, 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 okay. I have two points. I have two points to make. One, yeah. we have the, the current team that's <laughs> working on moving forward. Then we might have a new team working forward and a third team working forward, future forward. Now, three teams are very good people, too many resources in three different ways, yeah. and perhaps maybe it will be a competing and maybe it will not. I mean, it's probably a good idea to figure out where you're going in that process so you're not wasting, diversing your energies all over the place. So, one point, point number two, we make a living out of uh, creating value for any client. Yeah. That's what we all do. So when we are when we are, when we are able to compete in a global market, it's because we can deliver an output, a value creation for the end customer quicker than the competition. So when we kill side call suppliers because they need two thousand hours and we can do it in twelve hundred, when we kill Drupal suppliers because we can do it in twelve hundred and they need two thousand hours or whatever it is. Then it's because we're able to deliver that value in a quicker time at a cheaper price. So I'm not doing 20,000 years websites. I'm doing 100,000 years websites, 200,000 years websites, 300,000 years websites. And we're doing it with Joomla because we're able to deliver the value for the client faster than the competing companies in our market. Being in the middle end and upwards is very, very interesting. Yeah. There's a huge market. And there's some high-end suppliers that are really overcharging and earning a fat living on that. And they're using Drupal and Cypro, etc. So, so that's really the, that's the sweet spot to be in the market. If Thank someone you. pays a million for a website, you can deliver it for 500,000 euros and still uh, have a vacation for a month in Barcelona. I mean, what's the market? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so that's really what's interesting to be in the market. It's not interesting to be in the mass market. It's that, and okay, so let, let us move to you. Yeah. Um, I guess Drupal was five years ago in the same point before they built it eight. And I don't really know much about Drupal, but um, with the newest version eight, I guess, every extension developer, or more new developer there has to rebuild his module. And I saw recently a chart where they made a survey experience of Drupal 8 and 3% of the people said they're leaving Drupal because of, of this big change and I don't know perhaps somebody here knows more about this whole process and can share more about but perhaps we should look how or benefit from the experience of Drupal has. Just because you're not declaring in the wife or so they're letting they're having two CMSs. Yeah. Well, for a long time. And but they have a good thing. Yeah. That's the thing. Because each, each group will be. Yeah. The better? That's the best. You said that when you are doing the technical version. Dann fährst du rangefangen. Yeah. 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 Uh, by a different team and uh, totally uh, surprisingly from this idea, this concept you will never get the same thing you will never get there and then if you do it uh, that could take two years yeah, maybe. we need that product good enough in two years it's already obsolete is mm -hmm. that <laughs> I, I, I think <laughs> Go for them uh, evolving to the three, four, five, six uh, towards that lighthouse. In terms of functionality, not necessarily. Uh, uh, also, in, in, in regards of uh, um, architecture, as far as possible. For some things, for example, um, uh, with uh, the service layer, it would be possible to allow components not to, to use MVC any longer, uh, but to use uh, commands instead. 
could be possible already in the fall. Yeah, and then the extension can use commands because at the end of the day, all an extension is is a blank entry PHP file. And fundamentally, that is what an extension is. Yeah. So by that, if that's your logic, then the logic is that you can do that in Juma 3 now. I don't agree with that. I think there's a big difference. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Um, so five, min five minutes is coffee break. Um, um, okay, uh, I'm, I'm not sure who was first, but I'm you short statement <laughs> and you short. <laughs> okay, put it here first. Yeah. So just one question I have is that can we identify that A, we have the CMS end users as one market? extension developers as one market and the platform developers as one market. Yeah. And can we agree on a roadmap on all three fronts so that the end users, extension developers and the platform developers get value? Because a lot of times, uh, one of the big complaints we've seen with the last two releases absolutely is we can't really talk about it. Um, yeah. So it's important that see, yeah. from a pure marketing perspective at the end of the day, the end user doesn't care what you know, cool yeah. things you're building on, unless I'm an extension developer or an integrator. But if I'm an end user, I care about the features you're doing. Okay, so I think understand. we need to think in three different styles. And if we are going to solve those three markets, we okay. need to deliver some things. Okay, we need to deliver the personas. Yeah. Uh, the personas are working on it. Okay. They are working on it. And we are trying to define uh, which groups of what features we have uh, and what combinations and uh, how big these groups are. So we are working on this, but you take this, yeah. take this uh, with us. Uh, Ufuk, and, and I have to say, when you always, when you are only saying the same thing. No, no, okay. Uh, I see two approaches. One is the Ufuk approach, which is that you have a customer base, and 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 you have a customer why not build the approaches? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, so you, and you, and you are the last one. Can you see a bunch of schools and techniques to call you just the Joomla L, Joomla Lighthouse, and the Joomla X? Yeah, okay. Do it for I think there's, I've been with projects a long time, and I think there's one thing I've noticed is it does go in bits and starts, and things do get out of date. People are complaining that there isn't enough new stuff for the end users and all that sort of thing. I don't see I don't see any problem with saying yours is a research project and yours is the is the growth of the, the extension all the way through. Trying to reach that, but yours has to keep growing. I've heard a lot of you talk that this is the end goal. But by the time you get to this point, that's two years old, the end goal has shifted. So we've got to have a team which is always ahead of this, which is looking at what is coming, what needs to be done, what the others are doing, and developing for it, feeding it back. Yeah. Uh, we so to, yeah. to that, I yeah. we are feeding back, uh, not next week but the next week after, we are cleaning the, the server table and uh, moving issues and uh, pull requests and branches related to Joomla 3 uh, over to the Joomla CMS repo uh, because we belong there. Uh, so we, we are in fact backporting our experience There's on that. There's huge value in having a research group. That's what I'm trying yeah. to say. Don't, don't think there's two and one dies. Um, if, if the lighthouse is there and I'm always moving forward, can you keep drilling the value? Okay. We, so, good. Mm -hmm. One goal of this, this uh, session was also to, to, uh, to share information and to go on the stage and, and uh, stay together on the stage as it has worked. So, and um, I think we know now better what is the best approach of what we are going, what we are doing in the next, in the next uh, six months, 12 months, whatever. Um, thank you for your contribution to this. To this.